Hello, welcome to this demo about ACI and Red Hat Virtualization. We will show how ACI facilitates migrating between hypervisors and even across data centers. To do this demo, we have a vSphere cluster, part of a VMM domain, where we are automating the configuration of EDS. We have two workloads that are connected on the same subnet, mapped on a bridge, or configured on a bridge domain, 1040.40.254.24, and we have an EPG that we've used to configure the networking for those virtual machines. We have another pod on which we have a Red Hat Virtualization cluster made also of two nodes, KVM nodes, under the Red Hat Virtualization Manager. We added a second pod just to make it a little bit more interesting so we can see that the Fabric Administrator simply needs to map the same EPG to the Red Hat Virtualization Manager and that automatically configures the logical network that is equivalent to the uh, DB pod group in this sphere and automatically extends the EPG and bridge domain uh, via VXLAN across the IP connectivity between the two pods. So we can easily extend the same EPG to multiple hypervisors within the same fabric or even across fabric thanks to a multi-pod. Now, the Red Hat Virtualization Manager can use the built-in tools that enable it to import workloads from vCenter. We can delete them from vCenter then, and without any readdressing, the workload will continue functioning on the KVM hypervisor exactly as it was functioning before, which we will illustrate by connecting to the workloads through a load balancer. So workloads can coexist uh, on different hypervisors on the same EPG, or you can continue the migration to use a fully open hypervisor. We start the demo by looking at the vCenter where we have, that we have on data center one, we have ACI Compute DC1 cluster. We have various virtual machines running, and Web1 and Web2 virtual machines are the ones we will be using for our demo. These virtual machines are connected to a port group called ACME Tenant ACME Networks Server Network. This has been configured by mapping the EPG to the VMM domain. And we can see both VMs, Web1 and Web2, are connected to the same port group. We can see the ACME Networks application profile and the server network EPG. This EPG is mapped to the VMM domain ACIDC1. This is the VMM domain with the vCenter 7, and we can see the inventory of virtual machines and hypervisors. We can see the Web1 and Web2 VMs are running on ESX05. And further on, we can see the details that Web1 and Web2 are both powered on and connected to the right port group. We can already look at the VMM domain for Red Hat Virtualization. We can see the inventory of the Red Hat Manager, where we can see two nodes, Rev Host 1 and Rev Host 2, and at the moment, an empty list of virtual machines. This is the main dashboard of the Red Hat Virtualization Manager we have in Data Center 2, and we can look at the cluster that has two hosts, Rev Host 1 and Rev Host 2, we can see that these are matching the inventory that has been imported by APIC from the Rev Manager. At the moment, we can see the Web1 and Web2 VMs are not running there, but we already have mapped ACME network, the server network on ACME tenant ACME network application profile. So we can see the, the same network. As we can see here, the EPG is also mapped to the Red Hat virtualization domain. And this is why the same network exists in both the vCenter and the Rev Manager. This is a view of the HA proxy that we're using to load balance, and we're load balancing a VPI uh, TCP80 to Web1 and Web2. And this is the basic application where we're connecting to see, and we can load balance, we can hit first Web1, Web2, Web1, Web2. The load balancer is enabling us to get to both VMs. VMs Web1 and Web2 are on the 10.40.40 subnet. They have 10.40.40.12 and then 4041 IP addresses. We can look these VMs connected on the EPG operational tab, and we can see here the classical information, the name of the VM, the IP address, MAC address, the hypervisor on which they're running, and the controller reporting it, in this case vCenter 7. Now we can use the import tool from Red Hat Virtualization. We can select the VMware domain and the vCenter from which we will be importing we can load a list of available virtual machines and pick the one that we want to migrate. In this case, let's start with Web2. Before we migrate Web2, we'll have to power off the VM. Once the VM has been powered off, the load balancer will take care of not sending traffic. So now the load balancer is only sending traffic to Web1 and we can see that there's no service interruption in this case. 
Now we can import, finish the import process. We can select the VM that we want to import and configure the network interfaces. This is where APIC is helping because we can actually select to place the VM on the exact same network as it was before. The import process has launched. Very quickly, the Red Hat Virtualization Manager will start to initialize the VM. This process takes some minutes. We just have to wait for a bit and we have accelerated the video here. In fact, this entire process can be automated using the Ansible over VMS modules as long as with the ACI modules as well. Once the process has been completed, we can delete the VM from vCenter. Again, this could be automated as well using Ansible. So the entire process can be automated. We can see that the inventory has been updated. As we deleted the VM, the VM Web 2 is no longer on the vCenter inventory. Instead, it's going to be on the Rev inventory. Let's power on the virtual machine. When we power on the virtual machine, it will be assigned to a particular Rev host. It's assigned to the Rev host 01. If we go to the Rev host 01, we can see indeed, we can see the, the inventory has been updated. If we connect to the console of the VM, we can see that it's been successfully imported. We can connect to that VM without any adaptation or any refactoring. And furthermore, we can see that it maintains the same IP address, 1040.40.12. And of course, it can communicate with the default gateway that remains on the ACI fabric. Nothing has changed for that VM. If we look at the APIC, we can look on the EPG server network. The same VM is there, same name, different MAC address because it's been adapted to Red Hat virtualization and is now reported on a different hypervisor and different reporting controller, the Rev Manager and the Rev Virtualization Host. Again, as per the inventory that we're getting from Red Hat virtualization, we can see the Web 2 is there and is powered on. Now the load balancer is finding again the Web 2 on the back end and we can see that we are again sending traffic to Web 1 and Web 2 both connected to the same EPG network. So we can see that KVM and ESXi workloads can easily coexist and you can complete your migration from vSphere to an open hypervisor. Thank you for watching.